Yeah, I'm good. To be fair, uh, obviously it's diff difficult times, but um, yeah, not not too bad. But I mean, you know, we're what second, third week of January, um, and you know we've only played eight league games and a couple of cup games. So, listen, the expectation level when we came in, uh, I think the whole football world expected us to be. You know, to be bottom of the table and you know, and relegated by now. So for us to be sitting sixth in the table uh, while the, the season's suspended, obviously it's you know, it's it's been a, a, a real good um, you know a real good process for us. I saw obviously I've seen the poll on um, on Twitter and on social media, um, and for some it's been. Uh, Biggles weighed at home, which was fantastic. Great atmosphere. Uh, you know, beating Nuneaton, who were probably one of the favourites to get promoted. Uh, beating them 2 0 at home, that was a, a, a big highlight. But I think, me personally, uh, the biggest highlight for me was, was Banbury away, winning 1 0. You know, to play against one of the sides that, are, again, were, were really fancied uh, pre season. They had a new manager, uh, a lot of new players. Expectation level was really high to go there and put on a really, really stubborn performance and, you know, the hard work which, you know, we're all about uh, to grind out a 1-0 win. Jordan Clement scored a fantastic goal uh, and I think that was really the catalyst for us to, to believe and people to believe that, you know, we really are trying to create something and, you know, I think so for me that was, that's my person I like, followed closely by Nuneaton and Biggles Wade because the, the place was obviously home games. You know, it was completely rocking. We're obviously trying to keep the group, you know, together, um, which isn't easy because we're not, you know, we're not able to train, um, you know, but probably a little bit of relaxing. Um, you know, I've been trying to uh, get a few of the players, you know, higher up the pyramid. You know, we're fortunate we've got a couple of lads playing in a, uh, in a trial game for Gloucester. On Saturday, which would be really good for them, for for Thiago and uh, for Aaron, uh, and also Johan's playing in that game as well. So that's really good. And there's been a bit of interest in a couple of other players from from other clubs. So really, just trying to keep things going uh, with with one eye on you know the, the possible uh, return to action if that ever happens, which I don't think it will. But uh, you know, in next season. I think it's really difficult because I think that, you know, as a football person, uh, I think all the other managers will be the same. We all want to play, you know, as all the players do. You all want to play. Uh, we, the last thing I want is for a season to be null and void. You, you know, the boys, you know, to have two seasons of their careers cut short because last season was null and void and this season could be. Uh, but the, the bottom line is, you know, we're in the middle of a, a really, really... Uh, traumatic pandemic and, and people a lot of people have lost their lives and I think that the, the, the safety um, of, of supporters and players and, and anybody that you know wants to come out and watch these games has got to be paramount uh, it, it must be so unless it's until it's safe to do so and that the government feel that you know we're all in a, a, a tier that would indicate that we can play get back to playing then I don't think the, the season should continue but you know on the other hand you know, it'd be horrible, horrible for everybody, for the supporters, for uh, you know, sponsors, for players, to for the season to you know to end. The the best solution for me would be that if we can uh, continue to suspend the season uh, and have a look at maybe you know the back end of March, maybe April, and see if we can get a, a system where all the clubs play each other uh, once, so so we, you play half the games. Uh, I think that would be fair rather than null and void it, but you know whether that will happen, I, you know, I, I don't know. There's been a lot of suggestions mooted around uh, points per games over the last two seasons. Oh, I think that's ridiculous because you know the results from last season have been expunged, and uh, and that doesn't exist anymore. So for me, that wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't be fair. Um, obviously, it wouldn't put us in a great position because we, you know, we really struggled last season uh, in terms of points. So I think the fairest way for me would be that everybody plays each other once. Um, you know, that'll give you what 22, 21, 22 games, 
uh, I think that would give you a more realistic look and then if you you, you could base you know promotion and relegation maybe on that I think that would be a fairer way uh, to resolve it um, rather than null and void. No, I've, to be honest, I, I've looked at this and I thought, right, OK, start planning. And, and we have, you know, you've seen that we've brought in um, Lou Sudson from Coventry United, who's a really, really talented boy and he's been someone that's been on the radar for quite a while. Uh, but it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to recruit because the season, if the season, can, you know, if the season goes ahead as it should do, you know, in August, that will mean that the season's not going to start for what seven, seven or eight months. So as you, as you can imagine, it's really difficult to go out and recruit players when, you know, especially if you're looking at players from, you know, divisions above. Uh, it was, you know, they're only halfway through their current season. Um, and to, to recruit players when you can't train, you, you, you can't play any games and the season's not going to start for seven or eight months, anything can happen in that time. So it, it's really, really difficult and I think all the managers are you know, in that same kind of mindset. But at the same time, we're all looking at it and we're looking at players uh, you know, from the various leagues that we can bring in to improve what we've already got. You know, so that's what we're doing. We've got a, a short list of players that we feel would you know, enhance the, what, we've, what we've created. And we just want to try and keep things positive and, you know, keep moving forward, you know, in the right direction. Yeah, listen, the, the support that you've given the team, the football club, you know, the chairman and myself has been unbelievable. I, I, you know, obviously as a you know, former player and former captain of the club, you know, quite a few years ago to come in, uh, you know, and I came, you know, if I'm being honest, I came in and the club was quite in a wasn't in a great place um, because there was just such a, a negativity towards anything to do with Redditch. You know, we're almost the you know a laughing stock, and, and I think what we wanted to do was come in and just try and change the just try and change the thinking. Uh, but the supporters have just been oh, it's it's ridiculous. Honestly, it's you've been so important, and and the love that you've given the players and, and myself and, and everybody involved in the club has, has been huge. And you know, hopefully, we we repaid you by putting on some decent performances and you know long that may that continue so just just continue doing what you're doing showing your support you know at the minute on social media um you know and hopefully we can give you another side next season uh, add to the boys that we've got and you know give you a lot more positivity next season and that's the you know that's the hope